Hello YouTube fam, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Tina and I make videos on lifestyle, home, and DIY projects every single week. Before we jump into today's video, I wanted to say thank you guys so much for all the love on the balcony makeover. I had so much fun putting that space together and it just makes me so happy just seeing that you guys were also inspired to make over your balcony or your outdoor spaces. So if you guys do end up making over those spaces, definitely tag me on Instagram so that I can see and leave you some love. For today's video, we're working on some DIYs that are inspired by anthropology pieces. They always carry the cutest stuff, so I want to show you guys how you can get the look for less. All these projects came out super cute, and I think they make such a statement, so I think you guys are going to like them. And I want to give Skillshare a big thank you for sponsoring today's video. I'm going to go into what I'm learning this month a little bit later in the video. And before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe down below for new videos every single week. And with that, let's go ahead and get into the first project. Hello from VoiceOver Tina. For this anthro inspired dupe, we're gonna use polymer clay by Sculpey, and you guys already know the drill. I'm just gonna go ahead and flatten it out and use four popsicle sticks on both sides to roll out an even slab. And if you get any air bubbles as you're rolling out, go ahead and just poke them to release the air trapped inside and roll the rest out. From there, I'm using a small bowl to cut out a circle with my X-Acto knife, and then I'm just going to remove the excess clay, and the circle ended up being about 4 inches in diameter. And as you can see, there are a few little marks and uneven edges, so I'm going to take some rubbing alcohol, and I'm using my fingers to smooth it all out. And I know I go over a lot of these little tips and tricks, and they're all kind of sprinkled throughout a bunch of different videos, but if you guys would like them all in one video, please let me know in the comments down below. I love putting those types of videos together as a resource, and it makes me so happy to know that you guys find these to be helpful, especially when you're working with a new type of medium. Alright, so to create our bowl, I'm going to go ahead and just lay that right on top of a small plastic bowl and then shape it. Ideally, I would usually put this on top of a glass or ceramic bowl just so that I could bake it right into the oven. But since I don't have one that works, I'm using this plastic bowl. And to help retain the shape, I'm popping that into the freezer for about 10 to 15 minutes to stiffen it up. And once you take it out, you're going to notice that it's hardened up a bit. And that way we can go ahead and just pop it out and then our clay is ready to be baked. Once that's out of the oven, I'm using 400 grit sandpaper to smooth out the edges. Now we're going to work on the little legs of the candle holder and for this I'm rolling out one long coil and then I'm going to cut it down to about one and a half inches. I measured out three of these legs and I'm just holding it up to our bowl to gauge the height until it looks just right. Then I shaped it by pinching one of the ends to create a little bit more of a rounded pointed leg. And the original is a little bit flatter than this, but I just wanted to make it my own because I think this way looks a lot cuter. Now for the actual candle holder part, I'm just rolling out one skinny slab of clay and this one is about three popsicle sticks in height. To get the straight edges, I actually just put a popsicle stick right on top and then I cut out the top and the bottom to make a long rectangle and this worked out really perfectly. Then I'm taking a taper candle and I'm wrapping it around to create a little ring. I went ahead and shaped it and tried to make it as round as possible and then I'm also going to take some more rubbing alcohol to blend the edges for a seamless look. And now we're just going to pop those into the oven for about 20 minutes. So after taking them out and letting them cool down, we're going to give them a bit of a sanding on all the pieces. And as you're doing this, don't forget to wear a mask as you're sanding, or you can also use wet sandpaper to minimize the small particles flying in the air. All right, it's time to put it all together. So I'm using this clay adhesive to glue the legs to the bottom of the bowl. And then I'm using a little bit more of unbaked clay to conceal some of those edges to make it look like one piece. And I'm also gonna use some rubbing alcohol to make it super seamless. And using that clay is actually gonna help hold the legs in place, especially since we're putting them on a slant. So 
I'm putting that back into the oven, but this time I'm baking it upside down so that the legs are on top. Once that step is done, I'm just repeating the same steps with the candle holder and I'm using the glue as well as more clay on the sides again. And I know that I've broken this project down into many baking sessions, but you can totally combine some of those steps as you go along. I just find it easier to work with the clay once it's baked so that way you can handle it without worrying about messing it up too much. And that's one of the best things about working with polymer clay. You can build upon it and bake it as many times as you want. So here's our project so far all in one piece and you can go ahead and make this any color that you'd like. I'm using this gorgeous champagne bronze spray paint to give it a metallic look. After that's all dried down, I actually went ahead and added a watered down black acrylic paint right on top and as I applied it, I rubbed it off just to give it more of an aged look similar to the original. And lastly, we're giving it a top coat and our candle holder is ready for use. This candle holder caught my eye on the anthro site because it has such a unique shape and I think that ours came out super cute at a fraction of a price of the original. You could totally skip over the candle holder part and turn this into a cute trinket bowl and there are so many fun possibilities with this decor piece. So this month on Skillshare, I've been really doing a deep dive into interior design. Interior design is something that I'm really passionate about, but I'm also still very new to it. The apartment that I'm living in now is the first place where I've lived with no hand-me-down furniture, so it's been really fun to decorate and furnish this whole place. Lately, I've been really trying to level up my interior design skills, so this month on Skillshare, I'm taking a course by Rose Sprinkled called Interior Design, Interior Decorate Like a Boss, and I'm really enjoying this class because it comes with a workbook and it really takes you step by step on how to break down how to interior design with a purpose. The first lesson in this course is all about function, which is something that I really try to center around, especially when it comes to my own home. And if you guys want to learn more about interior design, this class is definitely for you. And if you're new to Skillshare, it is an online learning community filled with thousands of classes for learners and creatives at any skill level. One of the best things about Skillshare is that they curate their classes for learning, so it's broken down into easy to navigate sections and you can always learn on the go at your own pace. I really love that they're always updating their library, so you're always going to find something new every single month. Their premium membership is less than $10 a month with an annual subscription, so you can support all their classes at an affordable price. If you guys want to try out Skillshare for yourself, make sure they click on the link down below. The first 1,000 people will get a free trial of their premium membership. Alright, and with that, let's go ahead and jump into the next project. For our next anthropology inspired piece, I'm starting off with a scrap piece of cardboard and I'm taking a dish and chasing around it and then just using a pair of scissors to cut it all out. Then I use a smaller bowl and I trace that onto our circle as a guide. Now with my raffia, I'm just going to fold it in half a bunch of times until I get it to a good size and then I'm going to cut out all the loops and this is going to create the perfect bunch of these little folded raffia pieces for us to glue onto the circle. So all along the edge, I'm just dabbing some hot glue and then pressing a little bunch of about three of these pieces together onto the glue. And we're basically just going to repeat this process around the whole entire circumference of the circle. And what I found works really great is just letting the glue sit a little bit to dry and then pressing the raffia onto it. Alright, now that we have that all glued down, I tried to separate each piece to create texture and that was kind of taking a while because I was using my hands. So then I thought maybe I could use a pet brush and you guys, it did just the trick. It separated the strands really nicely and just gave it so much more volume and fringe, which is exactly what I was going for. And once I was happy with that, I went ahead and just repeated this process until I got to the inner line of the circle. This was quite a repetitive process, but I did get into the groove of things and it went by pretty fast. The inspiration for this piece is kind of a combination of a bunch of different wall hangings I've seen on Anthropology site. They always have these amazing boho fringe wall hangings and they're either made out of raffia or sometimes feathers and shells and they're always usually pricey. So with some raffia, glue, and cardboard you can create a similar piece for so much less. 
And a bag of raffia is pretty inexpensive. I bought mine at Michael's and I've honestly had the same bunch since I bought it last year. I'm finally getting to the end of the bag with this project and I've been able to make so many awesome projects with it. So I think it's a really great material to DIY with. Moving on to the next step, we're going to go ahead and work on the center. So I took a bunch of the raffia pieces and then I tied them together in a knot at the top. And from there, I wanted the pieces to be more stringy, so I went ahead and brushed those out as well. And then all I'm doing is just separating it into three equal sections and braiding it. So now we're taking our braid and we're just going to wrap it around the center and gluing it down as you spiral it. And I'm basically just going to do this to cover all the way up to the edge of where the raffia ends. To add some interest, I'm gluing down some of these shells to create a circle design. You can add as many or as little as you'd like of this, but this is also a really great way just to conceal some of those edges as well. The last thing we need to do is to add a loop to the back and we can go ahead and hang it for display. You can totally customize this project and make it as large or as small as you'd like. You can even make a grouping of these to create a little gallery wall and I think that would look so amazing. The raffia gives such a nice tropical boho feel and the fringe and volume on this piece is just everything. I really love how much of a statement this makes on my wall and it was just so simple and easy to create. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. All those projects were so much fun to make. And as always, let me know which one was your favorite down in the comments below. I think the wall hanging has to be my favorite just because I've been hoarding onto those shells for quite a while. So now I have a purpose for them, but I do have a whole bag left of them. So please look out for what else I do with those. And again, a big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. If you guys are interested in checking them out, make sure that you click on the link down below to get a free trial of their premium membership. If you felt inspired by any of these projects and recreate them, make sure that you tag me on Instagram. I also post on there every single day. And of course, I have to share some of your recreations on the screen here. You guys are seriously so amazing. Thank you so much for sharing your creativity with me. And thank you for hanging out with me in today's video. Stay inspired and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.